In September of 2016, a gigantic creature appeared off the coast of Japan. The first visible signs of its existence were a huge cloud of steam erupting from the bay in which the creature emerged, and a leak opening in the Tokyo Bay aqua line from which a strange red liquid emerged. While mobile phone footage of the creature's long tail was captured by members of the public, the Japanese government believed the footage to be nothing more than a hoax, and that the real cause of the steam eruption from the bay and the damage to the aqualine was unusual seismic activity beneath the ocean. That was until this same footage was shown on the news which then confirmed its validity. To begin with, biologists were brought in to identify this enormous, bizarre marine animal, but they were unable to do so. Upon examination of further captured footage, it was noted that this colossal being had both gills and fin-like legs. By this point, it was theorised that while the creature had leg-like appendages, it couldn't possibly come very far onto dry land due to its massive size. It was believed that if it did so, it would be crushed under its own weight. This, however, proved to be untrue. The creature did in fact make its way onto dry land after swimming up a river linked to the bay, destroying countless boats and bridges as it did so. Its ability to do this was a result of physiological changes that it went through prior to leaving the water. It had the ability to evolve to suit its environment, or change of environment. Upon emerging from the water and making its way ashore, the creature could be seen in its entirety for the first time. The following are descriptions of the creature based on eyewitness testimony, which has been verified. There are only three known forms that can be fully described, though previous forms and future forms are a certainty. These unseen forms won't be covered here, however. We'll just stick with what we know. Now the first form was never seen in its full glory, with just the tail and its dorsal plates being visible above the water's surface. It was, however, confirmed to be serpentine with auxiliary ambulation, meaning it has gills as well as legs, as previously stated. Briefly visible was the creature's eye, which was large, round, staring and unblinking, like that of a fish. This is only natural, as up to this point, it had been an aquatic animal. Its height and length cannot be verified. More information becomes available, however, upon the animal reaching its second form. At this point, it had emerged fully from the water and was now able to navigate dry land with the use of two large hind legs which were, surprisingly, able to fully support the creature's weight, though it did move in a rather clumsy fashion. It stood horizontally, with its body held parallel to the ground. Its body was a yellowish-green colour with elements of light brown. The head closely resembled that of an eel shark. It had large, staring fish eyes, much like its previous form. It also had a large, gaping mouth. It had red gills which hung from its neck and expelled a red liquid substance, possibly blood, the same substance seen when the Tokyo Bay aqualine was damaged and began leaking. At the front of the body could be seen two stumps, which seemed to be the precursors to a set of arms, and on its back were a set of light brown dorsal plates. When measured from the end of its snout to the tip of its long tail, the second form of the creature came in at 28 metres long in total. By this point, the creature was known by the acronym GULF, Giant Unidentified Life Form. Of course, as previously stated, this was a creature of change, of constant evolution, and so it wasn't long before physiological adaptions occurred which enabled it to move around more freely on land. Its next form had an upright stance, and its forearms were slightly more developed, though still did not serve any useful function. It was almost twice as tall as it was in its previous form. Its colouring was no longer the yellowish green that it was before, but was now a dull, dark, reddish brown. Once again, the large, fish-like eyes were present. 
Its long tail ended with a fleshy ball, and its gills were now closed and much less prominent, no longer being needed. The third form was 57 metres in height and 168.25 metres in length. By the time of the creature's fourth form coming into being, it had been given an official designation, Gojira for Japanese speakers and Godzilla for English speakers. This name was created by a mysterious biologist by the name of Goro Maki, who upon being exiled from Japan in the 1950s for unknown reasons, relocated to the US and took a job with an American energy firm. It was during the course of his research while working for this company, studying life forms that had been mutated by nuclear waste dumped into the Pacific Ocean by the US, that he discovered an entirely new life form, one that had quickly adapted to the radioactive conditions. He theorised that the creature was a previously undiscovered prehistoric life form that had begun to consume the radioactive materials. He attempted to publish a paper on his findings, but the publication was blocked by his employer. He named it Gojira, which on his native Odo Island means Incarnation of God. Godzilla's fourth form now stood at 118.5 metres in height and had a total length of 333 metres. It weighed 92,000 metric tonnes. Godzilla now had small, menacing, beady eyes which had replaced the large fish eyes of its previous form. No eyelids were present. Instead, the fourth form had silver-coloured anti-flash defensive membranes that would cover the eyes and protect them. The skin was black, scarred and bumpy. The dorsal plates were black in colour and were considerably larger than those seen on the third form. The skin also possessed red scars and lesions which, due to the creature's nuclear origins, were reminiscent of keloid scars. At this stage, the arms were much more developed, though there wasn't much movement seen, apart from a few small movements in the fingers. The creature's chest bore a prominent, axe-shaped sternum. The legs were extremely large and muscular. Godzilla's feet were covered with many small vestigial toe claws, growing from their tops and sides in addition to the five main toes. Godzilla seemed not to possess a tongue, and its mouth was filled with crooked, sharp, large teeth, some of which were growing from the flesh outside of the mouth. The upper jaw would unhinge from the lower jaw, which split in two when this happened. While drastic physical changes were present, it must be noted that Godzilla had also developed new abilities. The creature now had a way of discharging stored-up nuclear energy from its mouth, known as atomic breath, from its dorsal plates which it used to down several military aircraft and drones, and also from the end of its tail. The tail was very long and had spiky plates running along its length. The tip of Godzilla's tail was a bloody stump and seemed to be covered in small twisted bones like those from smaller creatures which had formed what looked like a skull, a spare head at the end. While Godzilla was eventually incapacitated by an ingenious use of a coagulant used to freeze him on the spot, there is still every chance that he could reanimate and embark on his path of destruction once again. A creature as adaptable as Godzilla, with a unique biology based on radioactive mutation and hitherto unseen, won't be kept immobilised for long.